program, Normal Show Live, is intended for responsible adults only. We advocate for the repeal of marijuana prohibition for adults. We discuss the science, culture, and controversy about America's marijuana laws. We do not advocate or encourage any illegal activity and advise all listeners to learn their state and federal marijuana laws by visiting normal.org, N-O-R-M-L dot org. Opinions and claims made by guests and advertisers of Normal Show Live are their own and do not necessarily reflect the philosophy and policies of Normal. Listener discretion is advised. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it, and it goes down smooth. Spanning the continent to bring you the truth about cannabis and marijuana law reform. I smoke pot and I like it a lot. From the promise of legalization. Uh, and I think we need to rethink and decriminalize our marijuana laws. To the agony of prohibition. One major responsibility is to encourage people to use less drugs. The National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws presents... Normal Show Live, Marijuana Nation. Now, here's your host, Normal's Outreach Coordinator, Radical Russ Belleville. Good day, Tokers and Tokets. Welcome. It's the weekend. It's been a long time coming. Friday, March 16th, 2012. And it's got to be 420 somewhere in the world. Thanks for being here. Uh, we got a great time for you today as we head into St. Patrick's Day weekend. Uh, my Irish American wife and I are taking a trip out of town, so I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, we're going to have ourselves a good time. Got all sorts of news. The day is just jam-packed full of news. And bringing it all to us after our first break is our senior news editor, Cannabis Carrie. Hi, Carrie. Hi. At least some of it. You know, we only have a few minutes. There. I know. Yeah. It's, it's, it's some days you get nothing on the news feed. Some some days there's like eight stories. So uh, what are we going to cover today? Uh, today we're going to go to Colorado where dispensaries there are sort of uh, shaking in their shoes, getting ready for another wave of prosecution from their attorney there. Um, another story involving medicated candy and kids. Mm. We're also going to go to San Francisco, a story that came out of the Bay Area Reporter last week uh, that covers a lot of these issues that are coming up with uh, public policy making in marijuana. And also, uh, in absence of Steve Bloom, I've got a little celebrity uh, marijuana news to give to you as well. Oh, I have a couple of stories as well. Sir Richard Branson had something amazing to say today. And uh, taking a look at the Denver Republicans' support for marijuana legalization. So we'll try to cram that all into the news segment. Thanks for that, Carrie. Also on the show today, it's Rockin' Friday, so Herb Thrasher's going to be calling in. He's got some great news about a new uh, a, a new group, well, not a new group, a new record label that we've signed on with Normal Rocks so that we can uh, cross-promote, so he'll tell you all about that, plus bring you some music from the Hempelation album uh, from Blues Traveler. Also on today's show, at half past, we've got an interview, I believe an exclusive interview, we can say, with Governor Gary Johnson, who was on the campaign trail here in the Pacific Northwest. He was run, running as a Republican. Now he is seeking the Libertarian nomination for president. We talked to him about running as a Libertarian and how he would legalize marijuana. We all know that he's for legalizing marijuana. We'll ask him how he would actually do it. Then at the end of the show, got time for a little radical rant. I'm going to talk about the dangers of us not standing up for cigarette smokers in something I'm calling In Defense of Smoking. Then in hour two, Toker Talk Radio, I'm going to give a half hour of Toker Talk Radio, and then I've got to run and uh, do some errands. So for the second half hour of Toker Talk Radio, I'm going to be bringing you video from the Baker Institute from Professor Alex Stevens from the University of Kent, giving you a perspective on European drug policies, including the Swiss, the Dutch, and the Portuguese. Uh, he debunks a lot of the myths about what's going on there in Europe. Plus, we'll take your calls at 971 we're back after this. You're listening to Normal Show Live, the voice of the marijuana nation. Hi, I'm Radical Russ. One of the best things about marijuana is the wonderful aroma. But when you travel a lot like I do, that aroma becomes a suspicious smell. That's why I endorse Stealth-Products.com, the leaders in smell-proof containers. From smell-proof vacuum bags to smell-proof backpacks and duffel bags, all the way to smell-proof digital safes, Stealth-Products.com has you covered. Stealth-Products.com brings you safe, secure, odorless layers of protection with activated carbon fiber. 
Backpacks and duffel bags are simple black so as not to attract attention with a logo or a flashy design. Now, nothing is perfectly odor controlled from the detection of drug dogs, but with proper vigilance, containers from stealth-products.com will help you avoid nosy humans. You're now listening to Elliot Beats. Stealth-products.com. Stealth-products.com. Hey, this is John Popper. You're listening to The Normal Show Live. Weedmaps.com. I'm Radical Russ from Normal. In my job as outreach coordinator, I travel every month, and when I'm on the road, I need a fast, accurate way to find the medical marijuana dispensaries in the area. So I turn to Weedmaps.com. Weedmaps.com has the best dispensary locator online or on your mobile device. Search by zip code or let Weedmaps find you, and in seconds, you'll have the addresses, phone numbers, and customer service reviews for the medical marijuana dispensaries in the local area. Weedmaps.com also has a section devoted to helping you find a doctor who understands and recommends medical marijuana under your state's law. You can even check prices on the Medical Marijuana Stock Exchange. Coming soon, you'll even be able to find the listings of normal attorneys and chapters, local head shops and grow shops, and the best weed-friendly businesses. Weedmaps.com has the information you need to be an informed cannabis consumer. Visit Weedmaps.com today, a proud sponsor of the Normal Network. marijuana, industrial hemp, consumer cannabis. It's time for this week's Normal News with Cannabis Carry. The United States attorneys are continuing to lead the current front line in closing down medical marijuana dispensaries by way of crackdowns in medical marijuana states. Colorado U.S. Attorney John Walsh has already targeted 28 medical marijuana dispensary locations within Colorado with threatening letters of prosecution for operators and landlords. Out of those, 22 locations have voluntarily shut down their businesses, many of them still trying to relocate. All of those letters were sent out because the dispensaries in question were within a thousand feet of a school. U.S. Attorney Walsh is charging ahead with his aggressive approach to shutting down large segments of the medical marijuana industry in the state by announcing this week that another round of letters are being sent out soon and that the letters are in the hands of federal prosecutors who are finalizing the locations that will receive this latest round of threats. He said that the new targets are also in violation of the thousand feet from a school rule. Spokesman for the Colorado U.S. Attorney Jeff Dosher said that, quote, it is the U.S. Attorney's plan to continue this process until every marijuana dispensary within a thousand feet of a school is closed. The authorities in Colorado are clearly at odds over marijuana regulation. This week, Boulder District Attorney Stan Garnett sent a letter to U.S. Attorney Walsh asking him to back off on his medical marijuana dispensary crackdown. He argues in the letter that the regulation of medical marijuana businesses is working in his district and is not worth the government's time to target dispensaries that are trying to abide by state laws. He said the people of the city of Boulder do not need the federal government dictating to them how far dispensaries need to be from schools or any other points of local land use laws. One last bit from the district attorney, uh, Garnet, to continue to target these businesses, quote, would be very disruptive to communities who have spent significant time and resources exercising their right of local control to balance the competing issues around medical marijuana. It seems that Walsh might have been too busy cracking down on those businesses to read his mail this week. Well, every time I hear one of these stories about closing them down, closing a dispensary down because it's within a, within a thousand feet of a school, the first thing I think is what else is within a thousand feet of that school? How many liquor stores? How many pharmacies? How many convenience stores selling cigarettes are within a thousand feet of a school? I mean, what message do we want to send the children when they can go in and get candy bars at the convenience store and right there behind the clerk are deadly toxic tobacco cigarettes. It's just so ridiculous to me, especially considering that the uh, dispensaries in question are carting people at the door, making sure they got medical recommendations and not letting minors in under any circumstances. I mean, it's it's a place that'd be least likely for the kids to be able to access, and yet they want to treat it as if they're storing radioactive plutonium there or something. Uh, and, and when we're talking about this as well, understand that when you're in an urban area, a thousand feet of a school is pretty much the city. 
anywhere, especially as broadly as they define what is a school, you know, not just your regular old elementary, junior high, high schools, but, you know, uh, uh, dance schools and, and public playgrounds and parks. And they start throwing everything in there where a, co- a kid could possibly ever be. And it pretty much puts the dispensaries zoned out of the cities and put onto the, the far extremes of, of different uh, urban locations, requiring the patients have to go way out of their way to get this. Meanwhile, people with prescriptions for OxyContin can just go right next door to the Walgreens, whether it's close to a school or not. And uh, more stories uh, that uh, involve kids. This story from Southern Oregon. The local news headline for Grants Pass, Oregon, unfortunately today was medical marijuana candy found in hands of child. A medical candy caramel that had a dosage of a half a gram of hash, so pretty strong inside, was found, according to a Josephine County Sheriff's Office today, in a child's possession uh, on Tuesday. Other than saying that no uh, criminal charges were filed in the incident, that's all we really know. The age of the child is unknown, but police say that the child was young enough to not understand what they had. The Sheriff's Office took that caramel candy that has a label with the dosage amount and a statement that the candy was intended for patients enrolled in the Oregon Medical Marijuana Program around to local schools to show administrators and teachers what the candy looked like. The sheriff also had a warning for schools that marijuana did have short-term side effects connected uh, with the ingestion that included sensory distortion, panic, anxiety, and impaired reaction time. Yeah, this is uh, this is something we really got to get a handle on, folks, in our community here. Uh, this can be used against us very easily by our opponents. You know, what about the children is one of the few resonant uh, attacks they have left. Uh, and we do everything we can. Obviously, the, this this mentions that it was labeled, you know, only for patients. It's not meant to be for kids. But, you know, that labeling doesn't mean much to a four year old. They just see caramel. They just see candy. They, that's what they're going to think. So it's incumbent upon us to make sure we model responsible behavior here and keep things like that, the medicated edibles, out of the reach of children. They aren't candy. They are medicine. You no more, no more want to leave those out where a kid can get at them than you'd leave an open bottle of Oxycontin on the table or open bottle of wine for that matter. Let's make sure that we're responsible about this and don't give our opponents any traction on this and, and, and you know, be, be diligent about this because, again, this is one of the few ways they can attack us. And this story comes to us from the Bay Area Reporter in San Francisco, California. Last week, a mature couple, Robert Blitzer, who is 66, and his husband, Henry, 63, were in a parking lot smoking a joint in the Castro District. They were charged by a San Francisco police officer, but not for actually smoking in public, but for... As medical marijuana patients, they were cited for possession of less than an ounce of marijuana. The men said the, said the officer first asked them if they were smoking tobacco. And when they told him it was marijuana, he checked their medical marijuana ID cards, their state IDs, and spent about 30 minutes with them while people stood around and began watching the exchange. The officer said that since he was unable to verify their IDs, he ended up issuing them the citation for possession, which in San Francisco carries a fine of 100 bucks. The couple say they have long had a home nearby and consider the plaza their living room in the Castro district. And just some backstory on this, rest. the men have been together for 42 years and were part of that lucky legal group that got married uh, in 2008, right before Prop 8 was passed. So the state does recognize their marriage as legal. But here's another case of the police using a public smoking ban that was intended for tobacco, but being used to sort of enforce outdoor marijuana smoking. The officer approached the man, uh, it was Officer Matt Loya, and gave the reason for the possession citation was because of that uh, not being able to get their ID straight. But the interesting thing here is that even though a medical marijuana card does not give you the right to smoke in public, even though there is a public smoking ban that does not specify what substance is being smoked, San Francisco is a city that has a voter pass lowest priority for marijuana enforcement. So now the men were appear, uh, supposed to appear in courtroom in front of a judge on April 11th to answer to their charges. But since that story was uh, published in the Bay Area Reporter, the charges against the men have been dropped. Oh. Now, you would think it was because they were medical marijuana patients after all, and they were cited for possession. But after that story was published, of course, the police department were receiving emails asking about the incident. So a spokesperson for the San Francisco Police Department said that the officer had put in a dismissal of the charges himself after coming back to the department and discussing the incident with his supervisor and it was determined that the marijuana violation citation should not have been issued in the presence of their medical ID cards. Now, the San Francisco police also want you to know that the officer 
made that contact with the men because of smoking in the plaza, not because of marijuana, reiterating that smoking is not allowed in the area and saying this incident was not about marijuana. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, in San Francisco, I could believe that. Uh, a lot of places in California are just, it's the smoke they've got a problem with, whether it's cannabis or tobacco. Of course, we can show that the cannabis secondhand smoke is is not anything to worry about compared to tobacco secondhand smoke. But, you know, we do need to recognize the rights of other people to, you know, not necessarily be, you know, in the presence of smells and smoke and things they don't want to be in the presence of in a public square. I mean, I'm going to talk about this more in the radical rant, but we, we do need to recognize that uh, people have the right to, to breathe non-smoky air just as much as we have the right to smoke pot. And I miss Steve Bloom, but here's some celebrity news for you, Russ. Jay-Z's former business partner and founder of the Rockefeller record label pleaded guilty to, to distributing marijuana yesterday in a Manhattan courtroom. Kareem Biggs Burke was arrested back in October of 2010 in a roundup of more than 50 other people for conspiring to distribute about 100 kilos of marijuana. All of the suspects were arrested at the culmination of a federal sting operation called Operation Green Venom that was targeting the wholesalers of marijuana in New York State as well as in Florida. Burke's resident in New Jersey was raided and authorities found the remains of a marijuana growing operation along with about $15,000 in cash or what Jay-Z would call a new purse for his wife's afternoon outing. In total, authorities seized more than 260 pounds of marijuana and about $2 million in cash in Operation Green Venom. Kareem Burke's next appearance in court will be uh, this May 18th for sentencing, where he will face a five to six year prison term. Jeez, that's ridiculous. Uh, it sounds all trumped up to me. I don't know. Uh, this sounds awfully fishy. And uh, one of these situations where someone of, of great stature, you know, and wealth like uh, Jay Z has somebody uh, working for him or a friend that is more than willing to, you know, take, to take this on for them. Uh, it's a shame that they have to go through this. And I, I wish we could just get this legalized so that they can avoid these kind of troubles with the law. In other uh, celebrity news, and thanks, Carrie, for those stories, uh, this amazing story came through Politico.com. Politico.com, of course, the uh, uh, White, uh, White House, Washington, D.C., inside political blog. Uh, they write, when, you're, when you go to a White House state dinner and you're lucky enough to get some FaceTime with the president, what do you ask the president? Well, Virgin Group head honcho CEO Sir Richard Branson said, quote, I asked him if I could have a spliff, end quote. Now, he told this to the Atlantic's Washington offices Thursday, the day after attending the dinner for British Prime Minister David Cameron. Branson continued, quote, but they didn't have any, according to a video of the event, as he recalled his effort to procure weed the night before at the White House. You can read more about that at Politico. We've got the link at our blog at stash.normal.org. And hey, Sir Richard, maybe you want to take a look up on the roof. Uh, maybe Willie left a roach or two up there. And in other news, uh, heading back to the uh, state of Colorado, city of Denver spe specifically, we got some news that was reported on Huffington Post that 56% of Denver County Republicans support marijuana legalization. That is 56% of the delegates at the Denver County Republican Assembly voted in support of a resolution to regulate marijuana like alcohol in the Centennial State. While the initiative, known as Amendment 64, did not receive the two thirds majority required to adopt it as a plank in the party's platform, advocates are hailing the vote as significant. The vote comes shortly after television evangelist Pat Robertson took to the airwaves on the 700 Club to condemn arrests for marijuana possession. Uh, the campaign to regulate marijuana like alcohol added, quote, on the heels of the Pat Robertson endorsement of Amendment 64, it is great to see increasing support for regulating marijuana like alcohol across the ideological spectrum, end quote. You know, Democrats, I've been warning you for years that if you're not careful, the Republican Party whose base is aging and becoming a white minority, they will adopt the marijuana legalization issue to woo younger non-white voters. And also we want to give you a quick note from uh, our chatter out there. Cal 215 Parents wants to remind us about a campaign here. This is uh, with regard to the Butte County DA, the Butte County DA who has taken the children away from Daisy Bram. Uh, you can check that story out on freemybabies.org. We've also got interviews with Daisy on A Different View number 14 and A Different View number 17. Uh, just check out the A Different View 420 channel out there on YouTube. Uh, you can also find 
links at normal.org slash AV. They are trying to uh, slam the Butte County DA's phone lines. They want to blast his phone lines. This will be taking place on Wednesday uh, from 10 a.m. Uh, to 11 a.m. That would be Pacific time, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., Wednesday the 21st. And we're calling with the same message. We want to be clearly on message here. Your charges against Daisy Bram are wrong, and you must stop your witch hunt. Your charges against Daisy Bram are wrong, and you must stop your witch hunt. You can find out about the charges at freemybabies.org. The phone numbers that go to the DA's office include 530-538-7411, 530-538-7412, and 530-538-7412. 7413. So 7411, 7412, and 7413 if you'd like to call in and help Daisy Bram. Hey, Russ, it's 420. How about a tune up? Hey, I'm here for that too. I didn't even know you were there. <laughs> Welcome, Ganja John. I got the Mobius. So let's take a break. We're breaking. Perfect. It's 20 after the hour, and we have to take a short break, if you know what I mean. Please support these sponsors who support Normal Show Live. Oh, have you ever met that funny reefer man? A reefer man. Have you ever met that funny reefer man? A reefer man. If he said he swam to China, he would say to South Carolina. Then you know you're talking to that reefer man. I'm Sub Cool from Team Green Avenger. At TGAgenetics.com, we are working on the leading edge of medical strains. Our strains are rigorously tested for THC, CBD, THCV, and other critical cannabinoids. Know your grow. Check out our genetic diversity at TGAgenetics.com. The home of Jelly Bean, Jack the Ripper, Vortex, and other award-winning cannabis strains. It's making my eyes better, and it's legal. I could walk up to the president and blow smoke in his stupid face, and he'd just have to sit there grooving on it. Do you really want to legalize marijuana? Prove it. Join Normal today at norml.org, and your donation will help us spread the growing truth about cannabis. Free speech ain't free, you know. Free the ganja tree, it's the healing of the nation. Free, free. the Kali wheat, good for meditation. Free, free. the pot smokers, the rina delight. Free. Lighting up the chalice, they keep no malice. Free the freedom marijuana. Come on, come on, come on, say, free the marijuana. You may hear me, hear me say, free the marijuana. Come on, come on, come on, say, free the marijuana. It's time for your daily Toker Tunes, the best in 420-friendly music from all genres that uplifts, entertains, and informs the public. Today, we take you into the weekend with Rockin' Friday. Our segment features the best of rock, metal, punk, and jam band music. If you'd like to submit your song to be played on Normal Show Live, send it to us at stash at normal.org. Now here's some more great independent marijuana music for today's Daily Toker Tip. All right, it's Friday time to talk with Herb Thrasher. Herb, what's up? Uh, not much, man. Just uh, loving life and uh, ready to bring some brand new rock to normal rocks tonight. I know. That's the, the, the big announcement. Uh, you got another record label signed on for us? Well, we definitely have been uh, talking with another record label, and it looks like uh, the Nuclear Blast Records is going to start allowing us... Uh, some access to their music and artists, so we're real excited about that and should have a lot of cool things coming up in the future. But tonight we have uh, brand new music from Year of the Dragon, mm. and uh, this is uh, a, a Dirty Walt from Fishbone. It's uh, it's not really a side project. That's why I hesitated, because it's kind of a side project, but it's not a side project, and uh it's actually a kind of brand new band, and so they put out a new uh, little five song EP, and uh, we're going to be able to, uh, we're one of the first to be able to play that and bring that to people, and we're going to be able to talk 
to Dirty Walt tonight on the show, so we're really oh, fired up. That's awesome. And the other thing that we do with, with Normal Rocks, we, we cover Normal Rock Sports, and we've got the Reefer March Madness Bracket Tournament going on. we got 17 players, and uh, bad news for Herb Thrasher with old Missouri. See, we're there. not even talking about that, are we? I thought we decided that we weren't going to talk about that. <laughs> What happened, man? Uh, you know, Missouri Unbelievable. busted. Yeah, they busted well, you know, a lot of people. What's funny, dude, is, uh, is I, I'm, I play in an American Idol bracket pool yeah. as well as this college basketball bracket pool. Yeah. And last night, the person I picked to win got kicked out. <laughs> yeah. And then today, the person I picked to win for the basketball got kicked out. Yeah. So, I mean, I am just freaking out for two, dude. And I just... <laughs> Wait, I'm, I'm going to stick to weed and metal. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> right, I mean, that's just, you know, I, that way I can score 100 and know what the hell I'm talking about and pick him. Well, I our, can pick a strain. There you go. There you go. A strain in a band. That's right. That's right, man. Uh, you know, our, our number one player so far, uh, William, uh, he's only missed two picks. But his two picks were uh, the the UNLV Colorado game and Missouri. He picked Missouri as well and lost that pick. But he's uh, still our leader. Twenty two out of uh, twenty four games picked right. I mean that, that's outstanding yeah. picking right there. That that's is. just outstanding. But I can't imagine anybody not picking Missouri. Yeah, that I was, mean that's if, a shocker. You know what I mean? If you if you pick Norfolk State, then I've got a joint for you. Let me know. <laughs> yeah, what the hell were you smoking? Uh, I mean, yeah, exactly, man. <laughs> well, let's get to today's Rock and Friday tune. You, All you're right, us so back uh, to yeah, yep. Today, uh, I've been you know, Normal's always had this Hippolation uh, compact disc that came out in uh, when did it come out? Like mid nineties, ninety five, I think. Yeah, nineteen ninety five. It came out, and uh, it's a great. CD, and at the time, it, it made a lot of noise, and uh, the thing about it is that the tunes on there are still great and still good, and so I, with having Fishbone on the show and stuff tonight, and Blues Traveler kind of were popular in the mid-90s at the same time, it just felt like a good time to dig into the Impalation compact disc and find a cool tune, and on that note, Blues Traveler is a rock band formed in Princeton, New Jersey in 1997. The band has been influenced by a variety of genres, including blues rock, psychedelic rock, folk rock soul, and southern rock. They're known for the extensive use of SAGs in their live performances. Recently, Blues Traveler recorded a best-of collection of older songs reinterpreted with acoustic instrumentation called Cover Yourself, released in October of 2007. For today, we're bringing back some great hemp. Hippolation tunes, that is. Blues Travel recorded the Sly and the Family Stone song, I Want to Take You Higher, for the normal compilation album on Capricorn Records, released in November of 1995. Do you want to be taken higher? Yeah, me too. So kick back, <laughs> turn it up, and let's all sing loud and proud. I want to take you higher. Check them out on MySpace. Buy the CD. Hey, hey, hey.
As Blues Traveler, I want to take you higher from Hempelation. I don't remember if it's Hempelation 1 or Hempelation 2. There are two CDs out there. If you haven't heard of Hempelation, you want to get a copy of those. They're still available. Check out Amazon. Check out iTunes. You can still get them. A few of them are available for download at our blog, stash.normal.org. You want to catch them from there. Coming up next, we've got our interview with Governor Gary Johnson on the campaign trail here in the Pacific Northwest. I'm going to follow that up with a radical rant. And then in hour two, you're going to get special video from Professor Alex Stevens from the University of Kent, an expert on European drug policy from our talk at the Baker Institute. Listen to Normal Show Live, Voice of the Marijuana Nation. We're back after these messages. Tokers and Tokettes, this is Radical Russ from Normal Show Live. We're proud to be the voice of the marijuana nation and proud to have you on our team. Now, you can represent NSL in your own Normal Show Live gear from HandmadeApparel.biz. Adam Hand of Handmade Apparel is one of us and a huge supporter of our show. He's designed the classic blockhead line of NSL shirts, hoodies, hats, and more. Worn by Radical Russ, Cannabis Carry, and Ganja John on the show and at live events, the designs feature their iconic logos and the It's Got to Be 420 Somewhere in the World tagline. Proceeds directly benefit Normal Show Live and HandmadeApparel.biz, one of our community's strongest supporters. You can also get your Cannabis Cure UK, Ganja John Show, Irie Island Hour, and more gear from the Normal Network at HandmadeApparel.biz. Visit handmadeapparel.biz today. Catch normal news with Cannabis Carry every weekday on Normal Show Live at 7 p.m. Eastern here on the Normal Network. The law offices of Omar Figueroa would like to remind you to stand up for your rights. Please do not give up your precious liberties. There's nothing wrong with standing up for our constitutional rights, and in fact, it's the only way to honor the Constitution that recognizes our natural rights. Treat law enforcement with respect and respect the Constitution by standing up for your rights. If you are detained or arrested, stand up for your rights by repeating, I respectfully invoke all my legal and constitutional rights. I do not consent to any search and seizure. I want to remain silent, and I want to speak to my attorney, Omar Figueroa. Omar Figueroa has more than a decade of experience in federal and California courts and graduated from Yale University, Stanford Law School, and Trial Lawyers College. Please contact the law offices of Omar Figueroa at 415-489-0420 or 707-829-0215 or on the web at www.omarfigueroa.com. Normal stands for reforming America's prohibitionist marijuana laws, and that cannot happen without directly engaging our government and elected officials. Local Normal chapters and other affiliated activists relentlessly lobby our lawmakers for a change we can believe in and report on their strategies and progress in this segment we call Our Government at Work. We spoke with Governor Gary Johnson by phone earlier today. All right, folks, we're joined by uh, Governor Gary Johnson, the former governor of New Mexico, running for president and seeking, now I understand, the nomination through the Libertarian ticket. Do I have that correct? You do, uh, Russ, and uh, hopefully uh, I am the Libertarian nominee, and uh, the opportunity, I think, the pie-in-the-sky opportunity is is that uh, the Libertarian nominee will be on the ballot in all 50 states in the general election, and then uh, I think there's a real possibility that uh, the Libertarian nominee uh, might poll at 15 percent and be on the debate stage with uh, Obama, and uh, I believe the Republicans are going to end up nominating Romney. Yes, and, and you know, this is something that, uh, as we went through the Republican primary process, you were uh, engaged in seeking that Republican nomination, and it was very frustrating to see you get uh, shut out of debate after debate after debate, while other candidates who were polling lower than you were in the debates. Uh, I had a theory, and, and, and I've, I've seen Representative Ron Paul, he's still in the race, and he still gains a lot of support, so I know a lot of your messages, a lot of what you espouse, 
are popular amongst the Republican base. So I'm wondering, do you think the GOP was reluctant to have two libertarian voices on the stage, maybe under the theory that one they can dismiss as a fringe, but two might be a movement? No, I think that that's an absolute, um, you know, they're, they're, that's an assertion that uh, I don't think that can be denied. Um, and uh, when, you, uh, when you think about communication, uh, the fact is, is that we as human beings, when we hear things from different sources, we, uh, we understand the message a little bit better. And so when there's just one messenger there, uh, it doesn't get as understood uh, as it would if there were two or several on stage. Mm-hmm. Uh, so in this political process, you know, we, we kind of find it getting boiled down always to this Democrat-Republican choice. I often call it Coke versus Pepsi. Uh, what would you like to see happen to expand our political process so more voices and more parties could be heard? Well, uh, I think this is, this is an opportunity that uh, presents itself because, regrettably, we're in such a bad uh, financial shape. I really think that the country is going to collapse unless we uh, take drastic action to balance the federal budget now. Uh, Not two years, ten years from now, but now. And um, in conjunction with uh, being a fiscal conservative, I think that what this country also stands for are those civil liberties that we're really taking for granted and really losing more and more of uh, on a daily basis. I like to think that the Libertarian Party combines the best of uh, what it is to be a fiscal conservative and what it really means to stand up for uh, civil liberties, uh, socially liberal, if you will. Here we go. It's something that our audience understands quite well, having been victims of this war on drugs for so long and seeing our civil liberties being violated on a routine basis over a plant. Uh, And we all want to thank you for uh, coming out to the various events in the cannabis community, the hemp fests and the the marches to lend your uh, voice and and to give folks your view for America. So you're already well known by our audience for your legalization stand. So I'm just going to propose that marijuana is going to be legalized in one form or another pretty soon. Now, some people propose state-run pharmacy-style distribution systems. Others propose more free market solutions. What solutions for marijuana legalization would you support or propose if you were in the position to do so? Well, Russ, I I think it's going to end up to be a 50-state phenomenon similar to alcohol. You know, we we have the same products, but... uh, from state to state, they're uh, administered uh, in different ways. If I was a state, if I was a governor uh, implementing the legalization of marijuana, I would want to make it just as free market as possible, uh, making it uh, produce an ID uh, similar to alcohol to purchase. I'd probably just pitch back on uh, on alcohol stores, but... Um, I, I'm not set in concrete regarding any of it. Um, I just think the more you get government involved in anything, the more screwed up it becomes. So uh, <laughs> I do believe we're going to legalize marijuana, and uh, I hope uh, the government doesn't take the step to make it uh, to make it really hard to get and uh, complicate the issue further than it has so been so complicated. For my entire lifetime. No kidding. And we've got two states uh, with marijuana legalization on the ballot. Colorado's proposing legalization of an ounce and home cultivation as well as retail distribution. Washington State, I understand you're on the road heading to Washington State. Uh, They are proposing legalization of an ounce and then a state-licensed retail system. Uh, But again, uh, unlike alcohol, they're legalizing only a certain amount. You can only purchase a certain amount. So you'd want to see those restrictions lifted, perhaps, in in the future? I I, I would absolutely want to see those restrictions lifted. But as, as I'm sure you would agree... Uh, incremental steps, if, if in the right direction, there's nothing wrong with that either. But uh, let's let's just let's just do it. I, I rest, I'm really uh, I'm really believing that uh, Colorado is going to be the domino that uh, falls that causes all 50 states to uh, eventually legalize marijuana.
You know, I just returned from the Baker Institute in uh, Houston, Texas. Uh, it was a forum on legalization. And in talking to some opponents and even some supporters, one worry that I kept hearing echoed over and over was this concept, uh, the Marlboroization of marijuana. This idea that big corporations will take over marijuana and they'll advertise it, you know, like Budweiser does with funny, sexy ads on the Super Bowl meant to lure in youth. And since our Supreme Court has said commercial speech equals free speech, uh, what would we do with respect to marijuana advertising? And would you want to try to do anything to protect the kids from that imagery? Well, I, I've always been in the having uh, not smoking marijuana today, not drinking alcohol today, but having done both in my lifetime, um, I've always maintained that uh, legalizing marijuana will lead to less overall substance abuse because so many users of uh, alcohol now that don't use marijuana because it is uh, it is criminal, uh, I think would find marijuana to be a much safer alternative. So uh, looking at uh, looking at advertising for marijuana, I'm also in the camp that although I absolutely, totally, completely support uh, home cultivation of marijuana, I think that's going to be something of the past once we actually legalize marijuana, because why, why grow it uh, at home when you can go buy uh, when you can go buy it on the shelves, quality, quantity, known, very reasonably priced. Kind of the analogy of uh, would you make bath? Would we make bathtub chin today? No, because there's <laughs> tangeray. Very... Uh, I think that same phenomenon will exist uh, when it comes to marijuana and being able to buy a Marleyboro uh, off the shelf. <laughs> Marleyboro. Advertising. Advertising, like I say, uh, allowing alcohol to be advertised. Uh, there's a real hypocrisy to allowing alcohol to be advertised and to not allow marijuana to be advertised when we get to that point because uh, alcohol is so much more dangerous uh, than marijuana. Mm. This world would be a different place if all of our politicians were as educated on this issue as you are, Governor Johnson. Uh, I want to thank you for taking the time out of your drive to uh, speak to us here on Normal Show Live. And, uh, folks, if you want to get involved, uh, the website is GaryJohnson2012.com, uh, right? That's right, Russ. Thanks. GaryJohnson2012.com, seeking a libertarian nomination. I saw you had a, a 50 states bracket uh, pool going up on there. Uh, so in non-political well, news, did you do a, a, an NCAA bracket, and how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we're, we're trying to qualify for federal matching funds. So that's, that's uh, our setting up those brackets like that. And uh, we're very close to uh, qualifying for federal matching funds. And by very close, I mean just a handful of dollars, just thousands of dollars relative to be able to raise hundreds because of the formula involved uh, in federal matching funds. Mm. A long story there. The, the short outcome is, is that we're going to qualify, and these brackets help us do that. Fantastic. And uh, no NCAA picks? Well, uh, you know, the Lobos won in the first round, and yeah. that, uh, uh, New Mexico is my alma mater. So uh, uh, go Lobos, man. <laughs> Get to 16 and keep going. All right. You heard it here first uh, from uh, Governor Gary Johnson. Go Lobos and uh, go Gary Johnson, GaryJohnson2012.com. Uh, thanks for joining us here again, and I know I will see you again soon. All right, Russ. Thank you very much. Uh, big thanks to Governor Gary Johnson for speaking to us earlier this afternoon. And uh, he'll be up in Seattle, Washington tomorrow uh, campaigning. So uh, good luck to him there. When we come back, a little time for a radical rant. We're going to talk about smoking. Back after this. You're listening to Normal Show Live, the voice of the marijuana nation. There is peaceful solution called a peace revolution and now let's take back america hi this is willie nelson like millions of freedom loving americans i'm a marijuana smoker and i don't think that that should be any of the government's business there's absolutely nothing wrong with the responsible use of marijuana Next time you light up, take the time to let your elected officials know how you feel. It's time we legalize marijuana and stop treating marijuana smokers like criminals. 
For more information on how you can help legalize marijuana, please contact Normal at NORML.org. It's Wiz Coleco from the Ivy Island Hour, which comes to you live every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Pacific on the Normal Network. I just wanted to let you know that two of my favorite bands are teaming up to spread good vibes across the land and are headed to a venue near you. Revolution is heading out on the second leg of their tour in support of the release of their new triple album, Peace of Mind, which includes full-length acoustic and dub versions. They'll also be joined by our boys from the land of Aloha, The Green. We're also promoting the recent release of their latest album, Ways and Means. You can check out a full list of shows, get the latest swag, and most importantly, find their music at revolutionmusic.com and thegreen808.com. Don't miss this amazing tour. I promise you, after these shows, you'll have peace of mind. You want answers? I'm as bad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore! You want answers? You have offended my family. I think I'm entitled. You want answers. I want the truth. And you have offended Shaolin Temple. You can't handle the truth. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Hoorah! Radical Brand. Welcome back, everyone. 48 after the hour. I'd originally planned uh, to play... The Professor Alex Stevens video in this segment. And then when I got to cutting it up, I realized I can't just play 10 minutes of this guy. I got to play the whole thing. He's too good. So uh, I'm going to play the whole 30 minute video in hour two uh, in the second half hour, which works out well because both Carrie and I have places we got to be and some errands we got to run. So we get kind of a half hour off early here for the uh, from the live show. Hey, it's the weekend. It's St. Patrick's Day. Uh, my wife's Irish, so give me a break. Uh, so anyway, also uh, that left me kind of without a rant for the day. Uh not really a topic to cover, but uh, I just thought I'd throw a few miscellaneous things in. And, and first, I wanted to cover uh, High Times Magazine. As you know, uh, last month, uh, High Times Magazine had the uh, cover with uh, Snoop and Wiz Khalifa. And my article was in there. This was a, a feature article, my first feature article in High Times on page 84, Beware the Box Canyon. Uh, and this is my this is basically my essay on the how the, the how, how medical marijuana is kind of stalled out. And it's it's getting more and more difficult to pass medical marijuana laws in the in the other states that are trying to pass them, and that we need to now shift into legalization. You know, we've got more people on our side now uh, that believe it should be legalized than don't. It's time to press the advantage. Well, this new High Times is out now. This is the uh, strongest strains article, and on the cover here they say, uh, John, that the uh, strongest strain is OG Ghost Train Haze. <clears throat> THC I, uh, analysis of 25.49. Now, first of all, let's just say 25 and a half because you can't really test THC to the 0.49s, right, like right, to the right, hundredths, right? right so right. let's say 25 and a half. That's pretty bomb. Yeah, it's uh, that's by Rare Dankness Seeds out of Colorado. Um, I've tried it, and I just ordered the seeds, as a matter of fact. So we'll be getting some of that out on out in Oregon, which will be really nice. It's fan freaking tastic. Yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. Well, in this in this uh, high times here, stronger strains. I have another article on uh, page twenty seven, and, and really nice. I'm right next to the Hitman Glass release party, which is awesome. I'm I'm hoping to make it to that chess that chess pieces party. Yeah, four twenty yeah, uh, at Denver. the Illusion Glass Gallery. But right next to that ad, there it is. And this is my uh, article entitled "The Dawn of the Dab." Now. Those of you who've been following the show for a while, you might know that I wrote uh, an article similar to this uh, called The Danger of Dabs, and it ignited a firestorm of controversy amongst the Earl community. The Earlers. Actually, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I wouldn't say that that happened. Once. Okay. It wasn't I a would say it was a firestorm from a small group of Earlers from Denver. There we that go. That was about it. <laughs> well, close enough. So yeah. uh, anyway, and I, I realized that, you know, in, in the way that I write, sometimes I assume people have followed me and know my tone. And yeah. when you write for a magazine, that ain't the case, right? When they write for a blog, they can follow you for a while, but you write for a magazine, people never read you before, and bam, you're hitting them with something. Yeah. So High Times uh, you know, approached me about rewriting that, and I did, and I didn't title it Dawn of the Dab. That's what they title it. I, thought, I think that's kind of cute. Uh, but here it is. A Dawn of the Dab concentrates gain in popularity, but PR problems remain. Which yeah. is, yeah, that, 
that's the point I was always trying to make. It's yeah. like, you know, realize you, you can't just walk out with uh, new big old pieces of glass, new titanium nails and big old propane blowtorches and not expect the public to go, oh, what? <laughs> I mean, Gadget John got the example here. Uh, big cam up there. But you can my, see that. My mom's not super stoked on uh, this little set of, of gadgetry. Let's see if we can get Ganja John on the cam there. Cam four. Which cam are you on? Five? five. There you are. You're on cam five. So, yeah, that's, you know, blow torches and, and uh, accessories like that. That's new to people. And we're just trying to remind everyone to help educate everyone else to know, you know, that, hey, there's nothing to fear here. And what I like is... It's just a blowtorch, people. It, it's just a blowtorch. You could be making creme brulee. It's not, yeah. that, it's not that scary. Uh, and the, um, the, what I like, too, is the increased potency. They have the, the, the sidebars here. And one of the highlighted bars is the increased potency of BHO simply means that less of the product is required to achieve the same effect. That's absolutely true. Yep. That's why, that's why uh, I'm not doing uh, any oil hits before the show or during the show. He almost never does. Almost never, because uh, <laughs> it ties up your tongue. But uh, I, will, I will hit a bowl or a joint, you know, because yeah. that can be moderated. And then also there's the, uh, the blow up here that says dangerous dabs. Alcohol prohibition made it profitable for untrained moonshiners to make whiskey and occasionally blow up their own backyard distilleries. A hash maker wearing protective gear is no more dangerous than a gas station attendant filling your tank. With another uh, analysis or an analogy that I came up with, and I hope that sticks. So check that out. These are the last two issues of High Times, and I'm uh, proud to have articles in both of those. Check that out. Now, I did want to talk a little bit about uh, smoking and uh, recent smoking bans because I just got hit with a uh, cleaning fee, what they call a cleaning fee, uh, for smoking when mm -hmm. I was in uh, Texas. Right. And uh, it was me, you know, I was hanging out with some crew, some of the uh, local uh, grassroots activists. And they were, uh, you know, I didn't fly into Texas with anything. I'm not going to do that. I, I know better. So, uh, yeah, so we were hanging out and we, have, of course, had the room the, the the windows wide open, you know, we're trying to, you know, vent out, but uh, have the towels, you know, the wet towels on the cracks of the doors, you know, the shower cap over the uh, smoke detector. A lot of people don't know that one. Yeah, that's a good one. I've actually. been popularizing that one. If you go to most uh, hotels, they'll have that little shower cap, the little plastic with the, the elastic around it, right? You put that over the, the smoke detector. There you go. And then, you know, it doesn't go off. Voila. But I had one of those adjoining rooms and the person in the adjoining room complained. Yeah. And so I got the call from security and I got the guy to come up and visit. And so it's pretty obvious, you know. Mm. And so I got hit with the uh, $250 smoking fee. Now, as luck would have it, I guess not luck, but appreciation, uh, that has been taken care of, been dealt with. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very nicely so. Yeah. Also, um, speaking of, of uh, going to uh, Texas, my video on the uh, Baker Institute with that Kevin Sabet debate. Most debate, popular. Most popular ever on the the, the uh, Baker Institute, and we're over six thousand views now. So that's crazy! Hooray! We're very happy. Princes, about that. queens, political delegates, and me, and you. Yeah. You're the most popular. There we go. But uh, really, YouTube plus marijuana—that's kind of like shooting fish in a barrel, right? <laughs> for, as far as trolling for hits. Yeah. But uh, with respect to that, I wanted to get back to the smoking ban and. You know, it's something that maybe as tokers we haven't uh, paid too much attention to for people that are uh, that are smoking cigarettes. But the increasing um, banning of smoking, you know, first it was smoking in restaurants and bars mm -hmm. and public places or public buildings and then beaches and, you know, and the, the courtyards, you know, just like the, the, the story Carrie had earlier today uh, with the couple in San Francisco where, you know, they've got a smoking ban that, uh, that affects them. And it's just increasingly become like, as comedian Dennis Leary once said, what, you can only smoke under the covers of your own bed at night with a flashlight? Is that, is that, is that how far this has gone? And, and, and I hear furthermore stories of parents who get, uh, you know, charged or get counseled to not smoke in their own homes because they got children in the homes. And, oh, what about the children in the secondhand smoke? Now, my dad was a smoker, and I grew up in a home where, there was cigarette smoke all the time. I grew up in a home where, uh, it, where dad would be driving and we'd be in the car and you'd be smoking in the car, right? Uh, this, this attempt to try to nerf our entire world, you know, for what about the children, make everything as safe as possible. We need to recognize 
that as this happens uh, and we don't address it with respect to the smokers, then it continues. It's eventually going to come back and bite us. And that's where we're getting to the, the place here with cannabis, where now there's so many different ways of enjoying cannabis, the candies, the edibles, the tinctures, the vaporization, the little pen vapes now, everything's mm-hmm. so handy and flameless and just, I worry about pot smoking kind of going out of vogue and that smoking will be, you know, pot smoking, smoking a joint or a, a bowl will kind of be looked down on. We get frowned upon it. And, and even if marijuana becomes legal, we end up having places where vaporization will be allowed, but smoking a joint will be something you have to go outside into your right, nasty right. joint smoker. So if you're old, old school like me and you just like smoking joints, the, for me, I mean, I love vaporization. I love the dabs. I love all these different things we get a chance to uh, experience here on the West Coast, especially. Uh, but there's, to me, there's just nothing quite like sharing a joint with someone. From the from the secret handshake that you have when you're passing it one to the other and you got to do that little finger pass thing to just the, you know, the, just the feeling of smoke in your lungs. There's something grounding about that. Something that kind of, I don't know, connects you to your mortality in a sense. I just think I'm addicted to that action of the just the dragon breath. Yeah. Kind of thing, you know, um, with vaporization, you blow out nothing. It's like, well, is it working? <laughs> exactly. I There's, know it works if I'm coughing my ass. Off, that's you know? that's part of it. Maybe too. that's not good for me, but it's my choice. And and you know, I just think that uh, as far as smoking goes, that we need to be a little more uh, cognizant of what's going on with smokers and how they're being uh, discriminated against. Because those same laws, as we saw in that San Francisco case, they're going to be used against us. Those same smoking bans now that we have in all hotels. Where they charge you 250 bucks for a cleaning fee. Where nothing is clean. Which I, I never understood. That's like, look, why don't you, when I check in, how about you just say I have an option that says smoking and I check a little box. Yes, smoking. And you add 250 to my bill. Yeah. Let's just quit hiding around this. Quit going, let adults be adults. Hey, I'll pay extra. I'll yeah. pay extra to be able to smoke weed in my room. Yeah. And, hey, and before, especially before we oh, hit yeah. the weekend, I'm sorry. I got to promote our Facebook page for the oh, normal yeah, network. Ahead. And uh, you guys hit the like button on our Facebook page. Get more updates about all of our shows and more updates about this show and uh, more videos and backstage stuff that you guys can only find there. Oh, backstage stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, everybody. It's been a great week. We will see you next week with more news and interviews you can use for the cannabis community. For Ganja John, Cannabis Carry, Wiz Calico, Todd Armstrong, Brian Blank, Brian Red. Uh, NorCal Perps, uh, Herb Thrasher, everybody who contributes here, and more that I'm probably forgetting. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned for Hour 2, and until next time, take care of each other, Tokers. We love it. We love the herb. This is Normal Show Live, the voice of the marijuana nation. You're it, 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 you're it,